Hello everyone, my name is Dave Landry. Today I want to give you a brief introduction to my approach to the markets. Before we do that though, let's take a look at the disclaimer screen. As you know, or probably know, you can lose money trading. Let me just sum this up for you. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. You're probably wondering who the heck I am. Don't worry, I'm not going to read all this to you. If you want to find out more about me, go to my website, DaveLander.com. Click on About and click on my name just a couple of highlights real quick though i have a retail and institutional consulting business i've been trading for a very very long time i have three books about the markets and those books have been published in seven languages, and hopefully uh they'll be published in eight languages as of this fall if everything goes well now enough about me you probably want to know more about the methodology than you do, do than you do about me and certainly i feel the same way uh, so let me just give you a little highlights here, or a few little highlights here. It's not my way or the highway. If you're already successful in what you are doing trading-wise, then by all means, keep on doing what you're doing. But if you could take a piece of what I do and incorporate it into your work and make your work even better, then by all means, do so. There's no secrets to trading. There's no proprietary indicators. Everything that I do, I reveal fully it's not a get rich quick scheme there will be losses then you win by surviving the bad times relatively unscathed and by doing great in the good times there's a repeatability factor to what i do if i recommend a stock that fits the methodology you should be able to do just as well or unfortunately poorly as i do on that stock so if the stock's up 100 percent you too should be able to trade that stock and be up 100 percent if you understand the methodology you're doing your own research you find a stock that fits the methodology there's a repeatability there too now the reason i'm harping on repeatability is just some from some experiences that i've seen in the past for instance, I know of one trader that was doing like 150 trades a day, was trying to have people follow him, and the results were abysmal. Nobody could do that many trades. I certainly can't. I know another trader who has very, very small wins per trade. I think it was like $30 per trade. And by the time you factor in commissions and slippage, it's much smaller than that. So just a few trades could wipe out a string of winning trades, maybe a month or two months or even six months worth of trades on a few trades that go awry. So that's the repeatability is important. One more point about repeatability. Some other uh, experience that I've had is uh, what people will tell you that uh, they'll get you in a penny stock and, and they, they tell you you can make a lot of money on a penny stock. And what will happen is they'll get in and by the time you get around to getting in, that stock's already higher and they're already getting out on top of you. So just trust me, this type of thing does happen out there. My methodology is a very repeatable repeatable methodology and that's one thing that I'm very proud of it is a lot of work that's one of the criticisms of my methodology is that it's hard work but anything I think anything in life worth doing is worth working hard at um, you didn't become a doctor lawyer or automatic transmission mechanic without a lot of hard work and without a lot of experience uh, the reason I do have this educational side of my business at retail and institutional consulting is because because of the work, I throw off a lot of excess research. I can't use everything that I come up with. The goal, the main goal of the methodology is to minimize losses and allow for the occasional home runs. That statement right there is very important. So whenever you look at a methodology, make sure it can do both of those things. Now, here's the question. Should you trade for short-term or longer-term gains? And I took this chapter or took this paragraph right out of layman's and I like to use the example of the weather you really can't predict the weather longer term but if it's cloudy and thundering outside you know there's a pretty good chance that it's gonna rain soon okay but you don't know if it's gonna be raining this time next week or the week afterwards so in trading you could only predict the short term every now and then you'll see someone on TV or internet or wherever telling you the market's gonna be higher next year well if they knew that for a fact they should sell all of their possessions put all of their money in the market because they're gonna make a lot of money when that market's higher next year the truth is nobody can predict that for out but you can predict the short term when it comes to markets now the problem with the long term is, even though that's where the money is, it's hard to predict. Again, and as I said earlier, all predictions are about the future. A lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Your accuracy is going to be very low. If you're trying to predict that a stock's going to be higher six months from now, and you're going to try to ride that trend out for six months, 
there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be wrong. And then you're also going to have to use a very wide stop. So this is an example. If you were to use statistics, and, and don't be nervous about this because you'll never see a chart like this again uh, as far as unless I'm just trying to teach you some concepts about the market. But here's a market that moves around eh, a fair amount. And you can see that if you predict this volatility forward, it could be way up here or it could be way up, way down here a couple of months uh, from now based on this volatility. Now, markets do not adhere to statistics, but this gives you a good example of how far that market could move over a given period of time, considering how far it's moved in the past. The other thing, too, if you're going to have a long-term position, the longer you're trying to hold a position, the wider that stop is going to be. Now, let's take a look at the dilemma for a trader. Short-term trading is the only type of trading that can be done with any degree of accuracy. Your risks are much more better defined. Unfortunately, it doesn't make enough. The real money is in the longer-term trends. So, longer-term trading is where the money is. Unfortunately, as I said earlier, the longer the forecast, the less accurate you will be and the losses and drawdowns are too large. We've all read about these famous traders. They go out and make a lot of money, long-term traders, I should say, and then they lose a significant part of that money through drawdowns. So what's a trader to do? Well, why not do both? Trade for a small, quick gain, but also be willing to stick with a portion of the position as long as it moves in your favor. I, I think with my hybrid approach to the markets, you can have your cake and eat it too. So here's a setup we had from, from a couple of years ago. And we were looking for a short-term gain in here. And we were able to get that gain. It triggered and we got a little small swing trade out of it. But then through a trailing stop, we were able to stay with that stock for over two and a half years. Here's a more recent example. This is a solar stock triggered back here. Nice little move there. We got a stop in place. We trail a stop higher and we're able to ride out a nice longer term trend. Here's one that's actually open right now. This is an open trade in the portfolio. Nice little trend here, a little trend knockout move here. If you want to know more about that pattern, just shoot me an email at dave at davelander.com and I'll send you the chapter from the book. It didn't do a whole lot right away, but as you can see, it did begin to take off and through a trailing stop, a nice trend was caught and there was a short-term profit taken right around here. And this trade is still open and right now it's up here uh, at the high or mid-20s, I should say. So hopefully that trend will continue. Now, let's take a look at how we do that. The first thing you look for is a strong trend. The trend should be very, very obvious you could also look for a transition and trend that's a little bit more advanced than i want to get into for this um, presentation but also know that you could have a very strong trend which is obvious you should be able to draw a big arrow on a chart in the direction of the trend or a transition and trend where it looks like that trend may be turning let's focus on the trend resumption let's focus on a strong trend we look for a correction in that trend in other words we're looking for a pullback we look to enter the stock if and only if it triggers an entry let's say the stock begins the rally or whatever market we're trading and then comes right back in it doesn't trigger an entry then we do not take the trade now let's say the trade triggers because we know we might be wrong no matter how great we think we are we have to put a stop in place because again we might be wrong we look to take partial profits along the way we ratchet that stop higher as the market moves in our favor and let's say that market continues to move in our favor then what we do is we slowly allow that stop to widen out and hopefully like in previous examples that i just showed we'll be with that stock or the market for many months or years to come so Again, we're looking for a fairly certain move, and that's a reversion to the mean within an established trend type of move. That's a fancy way of saying we trade pullbacks. A market is fairly certain to resume a strong trend, at least back to its prior highs after a pretty serious correction, especially if you wait for that entry. Okay, So we look to take partial profits there, and then hopefully we stick around for the uncertain longer-term move. And once again, that's where the real money is okay and getting back to the example we just showed a few minutes ago you get a trigger here again it did do a whole lot but then it did rally up to hit the initial profit target we bumped that stop up here and then we trail that stop higher and hopefully we're with the stock for a long long time now what else 
Well, there obviously are some details to the methodology. There's more patterns than what I just showed here. There's bow ties, reversal gap strategy, first thrust, gatekeeper, uh, TKOs. We talked about that one earlier, and persistent pullback. Stock selection is important, too. I talk a lot about it in my weekly webcast. If you have time, check those out. The webcast are free but i do require a password the password comes straight out of the layman's guide to trading stocks and you could always email me if the book is in the mail there's a few things that in some cases you might want to exercise a little discretion for instance lately the market's been a little choppy there's a few discretionary techniques you could use to help you get into positions either a little later or if things are going really great you might want to get it a little earlier and, and uh, these will help you to avoid losing trades and maximize gains on the winners it's obviously money management it's very 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 important as i often say if i'm speaking somewhere and someone comes up to me and asks me a money management question i know that, that i know that that trader has either made it or is very close to making it because most people are pattern junkies and i'm a pattern junkie too everybody wants to check out the latest and greatest setup but the real traders are those who recognize the importance of controlling risk and allowing for the occasional home run, as I have just showed you. Now, the other missing piece is the mind. Psychology is very important when it comes to trading. You must read the emotions of others by looking at the charts, but at the same time, control your own when you go to trade. You have to have the ability to follow and execute your plan. You have to make decisions and more importantly, live with them. And all of this is much easier if you have a good money management place plan in place. In other words, let's say you're only risking a couple of percent on a trade. So what if you get stopped out? Because it's going to happen sooner or later. It's not going to kill you. You're not going to have to sell your house. You're not going to lose everything. You just have a losing trade. And trust me, it happens. The other thing is if you understand the methodology and know that they might be some flat times in between where you just have to sit it out and wait and possibly not do anything, it's much easier to live through those periods when they occur. And finally, the biggest problem or one of the biggest problems I see with people when it comes to trading psychology is micromanagement. They think that professional traders know exactly when to get in and exactly when to get out. The truth is we do not. We have a good idea, but that's why we use stops and that's why we use trailing stops and let the market take us out of our positions. We're not in and out unless you're one of those aforementioned crazy traders that's in and out 150 times a day. We're not in and out like crazy people all day long. We tend to put positions on. We tend to let them work good, bad, or indifferent. Okay? Uh, so how do you get started? Well, you want to start slow and build. If you do go to my website, I have a list of things that I would recommend you do there. It's a getting started list. It's right here. If you go there, you'll see that there's quite a few things you should do. Most of what is listed there uh, is free. That's quite a bit of free stuff. I have a, a big free education place uh, on my website. I do free uh, weekly webinars and I also have a daily newsletter all of this is free Laban's guide is fairly inexpensive you can get that from Amazon or get it from your local library and then there's other things that you need to do in order to get started so check out that on my website when you have time now you want to start slow and build just pick one pattern and get good at it I talked a little bit about TKOs earlier that's a great pattern to start with I would also recommend you start with a pattern such as persistent pullbacks. If you're watching this uh, uh, video here, email me and I'll send you that pattern. I think that's a good pattern, again, to start with. You need to learn the nuances of the methodology, any methodology for that matter. If the, you know the methodology has the ability to go flat for a while where you don't make a whole lot of money, but you're not making a whole lot of trades. Again, as I said earlier, it's much easier to live with the methodology also give yourself some time again you didn't become a doctor a lawyer automatic transmission mechanic overnight trading is no different in fact the smarter you are the longer it might take you because often logic does not apply you want to trade the best setups and leave the rest what amazes me is a lot of people that are very successful such as the aforementioned doctors and lawyers and automatic transmission mechanics are very successful in their own careers and they look for the best and they do the best of their careers. But when it comes to trading, they end up picking a lot of mediocre stocks. And there's really no need for that. You want to apply what anything you would apply for success in other parts of your life, you want to apply the same thing to trading. You want to look for the best setups 
and leave the rest. And I am available for follow-up. I'll give you a, a phone call or shoot me an email. Uh, if you give me an email, I'll be happy to uh, give you my phone number. Again, there's a lot of free stuff at my website, so check that out as time allows. Again, any questions, Dave at DaveLander.com. Thanks, everyone. Happy trading.